It will be given by Martinez Pumputis, a software engineer at Isovalent. Hello, my name is Martinez. I'm a Cilium developer working at Isovalent. And today I would like to give you a talk about how we implemented Kubernetes service load balancing with eBPF and XTP. So let's start with basics. First of all, Kubernetes is a distributed scheduler of pods, which are running applications. Pods can be grouped into so-called services, which can be accessed through Kubernetes load balancing mechanisms. Each Kubernetes node acts as a load balancer, meaning that the service can be accessed through any of them. When a client sends a request to a service, the node which receives the request has to select the service endpoint. If it's non-local endpoint, then it has to be redirected to a remote node. The reply from the remote node has to be passed to the intermediate node, and finally it can be redirected back to the client. Kubernetes implements the service load balancing with a bunch of IP tables rules. A packet sent to a service has to traverse each of them until a matching one is found. This not only increases latency, but also introduces problems with stability. Luckily with Cilium, we can replace the IP tables based solution. So Cilium, which is a Kubernetes networking and security plugin can install eBPF and XTP programs to each Kubernetes node. And this is a simplified version of the load balancing program. So instead of doing long list traversal of IP tables rules, the program does a single hash table lookup and to, in order to select the service and to select the, its endpoint. How does the program execution look from the Linux packet processing perspective? So first of all, we attach the PPF programs at two hook points. One is XTP and another one is TC ingress. So the program running at XTP selects the service endpoint. And if it selects the endpoint running on the remote node, then the packet is immediately redirected without even entering the networking stack. And if it selects the local endpoint, then the program running at the TC ingress will redirect the packet directly into the pods network namespace completely bypassing the upper stack. As you can see, we have less moving parts. So it means improvements in performance and reliability. Okay, so as my colleague has said, eBPF is not only about speed. With eBPF, we can create custom data planes, which functionality is not restricted by the existing features of Linux networking. So for example, in Cilium, we implemented direct server return with eBPF. So when the intermediate node is about to forward the request to the intermediate to the destination node. The intermediate node appends some metadata to the packet so that destination node can send the reply directly to the client. This saves an extra hop and also preserves the client IP. Another example is consistent hashing. So with Cilium, we have implemented the maglev algorithm which means that when the intermediate node, which previously served client requests goes down, another node will be able to select the same endpoints, meaning that no open connections will be disrupted. So finally, you might ask, how does it perform? The short answer, it performs really well. So from the benchmark, from the plot, which shows the performance of service handling at the intermediate node, we can see that XDP and TC ingress eBPF based solutions both outperform IP tables and IPVS ones. And also that the XDP program was able to max out the client requests. So that was it. Thanks for your attention and time for questions.
Thank you, Martinez. Always great to see burning servers. Definitely one way to get to serverless, I guess.